by the Montana Television Network. Montana This Morning continues on Montana's News Leader. The political landscape across the country continues to change. I'm John Schumo with a look at yesterday's primary results in four key states. And nine structures, many of them historic significance, were lost in Glacier National Park this week. Coming up, owners tell what they'll do now. 6.30 on this Wednesday, Chet Lehman, Missy O'Malley with you. That is our top story this half hour. For the second year in a row, wildfires in Glacier National Park have destroyed historic structures. That's right. And this morning, officials at the park are still adding up the destruction that's being caused by the Howe Ridge Fire, which is burning near Lake McDonald. Seven private residences and additional outbuildings have been lost at Kelly's Camp. It's the north end of Lake McDonald. Now, Maine Kelly's Camp House, a second cabin, and other structures owned by the National Park Service were also destroyed. The Howe Ridge Fire has burned an estimated 2,500 acres, and it's forced evacuations on the west side of the park. Now, MTN's Nicole Miller was in Glacier National Park yesterday, brings us the latest update on the Howe Ridge Fire and the historic buildings that were lost. The white spot on the shore is the Kelly's Camp teepee. The glow to the right of it is the fire spreading to the big house. Tuesday, one cabin is all that is left standing. The fire tore through overnight Sunday, taking at least seven structures out, including the main building. You know, all of the buildings, I mean ours and everybody else and our neighbors, are insured, so, uh, but depending upon the nature of the, the terrain, you know, and uh, we'll have to decide whether we rebuild or, or, or what, we don't know. After Uncertainty Monday, for Tom Payne and other property owners at the head of the lake, some relief after they learned their cabins still stand, but concerns as the fire continues to burn. When the winds turn north, northeast, we can get, we can get real serious here, because it could jump McDonald Creek and come straight back down the the east side. Tuesday, super scoopers scooped water from Lake McDonald to suppress spot fires along the north end of the lake as homeowners continue to brace. And so we want to spread our hoses all around the house, all around the cabin. We have two cabins there. We can sleep 16 people in beds. So it's a pretty extensive piece of property for us. And we want to save it. With the fire still active, crews continued to work to protect the remaining structures. Reporting from Glacier National Park, Nicole Miller, MTN News. Now there are also several other fires burning in that part of the state. Now one in Beaverhead Deer Lodge National Forest is in the Virginia Creek Fire. It's now 67 acres in size. It was caused by lightning. It was first reported on August 2nd. It's now 80% contained. And the Bacon Ryan Fire south of Big Sky now at 1,388 acres. Still periodic road closures along 191, depending on visibility from the smoke from that fire. Firefighting activity is going on. You can expect delays planned for it. And the Monument Fire was first reported on August 6th. That was caused by lightning. It's now burned more than 4,400 acres. It's just 2% contained. The Hay Press Lakes subdivision has been ordered to evacuate, and Ennis High School has been established as the evacuation center. Matt, all this happening because of those over the weekend, that dry conditions oh, that we had. A so lot of those hot. fires are lightning caused, and yep. you're talking about another chance for some of that potentially. Yeah, mm -hmm. potentially, and the good news is we'll probably see the temperatures back down a little bit, and this good. actually looks like a wet rain rather than the dry thunderstorms that awesome. we talk about. Uh, not saying that we won't have some dry thunderstorms, but mm -hmm. uh, the bulk of this may actually have some moisture. Till then, we're pretty high and dry. Temperatures really warming up by the afternoon. The early morning temperatures very cool. That actually helps firefighting efforts quite a bit. You see the air quality actually looks a little better for Bozeman and Butte for the morning. I think the uh, numbers will reflect that uh, at least for the early part of the day, but right on the brink of moving back toward uh, moderate air quality. We'll talk more about air quality uh, for the area and what to expect this week. That's all coming up in just a few minutes. Thank you, Matt. 634 on the national scene this half hour. Democrats and Republicans in four states went to the polls yesterday to choose their candidates for November's midterm elections. Democrats in Minnesota and Vermont voted for primary candidates who would make history if they win later this year. Republicans again saw the influence of President Trump has in their races. CBS's John Schumo has our details. Yeah. 
It was a big night of firsts for Democrats in yesterday's primaries. Minnesotans backed Ilhan Omar in the congressional primary. She would become the first Somali American elected to Congress. Together we can organize around the politics of hope. Omar and Rashida Talib, who won her primary in Michigan last week, are favorites to become the first two Muslim women in Congress. Minnesota could also have the first Muslim attorney general in the U.S. after Democratic Representative Keith Ellison won his primary. In Vermont, Democrats chose Christine Hallquist for governor. She would become the nation's first transgender governor if elected, but has an uphill battle against Republican incumbent Phil Scott. It's not just about the transgender community. It's not just about the LGBT community, it's about all marginalized communities. The Republican primary for governor in Minnesota saw the influence of President Trump. I support Donald Trump. I have always supported Donald Trump. Jeff Johnson beat former governor Tim Pawlenty, who struggled to distance himself from negative comments he made about the president during the 2016 election. And in Wisconsin, a former aide to retiring House Speaker Paul Ryan won that GOP primary. Who's with me as we spread our conservative Wisconsin-style solutions all across Wisconsin? Brian Stile will face iron worker turned politician Democrat Randy Bryce. John Schumo, CBS News. Democrats in Connecticut nominated Johanna Hayes, who would become the state's first African-American woman to represent a New England state in Congress. President Trump claimed a delayed victory last night, too. Kansas Governor Jeff Cloyer conceded to Chris Kobach, who President Trump strongly supported in the days leading up to last week's GOP primary there. Election news on the Montana scene. Montana Green Party making an attempt to get its candidates back on the ballot this fall. Green Party filed suit on Monday in federal court. It's asking a judge to strike down part of Montana's party ballot qualification law and then order the Green Party's five candidates placed back on the November ballot. 82 voter signatures used by the Green Party to qualify for the ballot were invalidated. Once those were removed, the party failed to meet distribution requirements for signature gathering. Now, the Green Party had candidates for the U.S. Uh, Senate and House and three legislative candidates. And a Washington law firm representing victims of abuse by priests and clergymen in the Diocese of Great Falls, Billings, says that a bankruptcy judge has approved a $20 million settlement. Lawsuit alleged that multiple priests and nuns in the diocese sexually abused the children for decades. Tamaki Law Offices represents 38 of the 86 plaintiffs in the seven-year-old lawsuit. The settlement was reached in April of this year. Now, in addition to the $20 million, the diocese agreed to post on its website a list of all known past and present clergymen members who have been identified by victims to develop a whistleblower policy, and all victims of abuse would be allowed to tell their story. The diocese filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy and protection on March 2017, now months before the jury trials before the victims' civil cases were even set to begin. One year later, the diocese filed the, to dismiss those bankruptcies. Now, Bishop Michael Warfell said then that the legal case was draining too much for church resources so that victims could go on. Uh, in other headlines, Butte's Museum, dedicated to the city's Chinese immigrant history, received a generous donation of Chinese heirlooms. The Maiwa Museum, located in Butte's historic Chinatown, received these items on loan from the relatives of the Chin family, who started Butte's Noodle and Parlor and Mercantile Store more than a century ago. The items included old silk prints, hand-painted plates, and a tea set, which will be put on display at the museum. These artifacts are all from their grandmother who came to America around the year 1900 and brought these marvelous things with her. That museum opened from 10 o'clock in the morning until 4 in the afternoon, Tuesdays through Saturdays. I'm interested about that noodle Absolutely parlor. Too. That's good. Oh, good mm, stuff. Good stuff. Yummy. Yeah, yeah. It is time for a quick break. Stay with us. In a moment, we have an invention to show you, making everyday tasks a little bit easier. It's called the exoskeleton. That's explained in just a moment. But first, we're going to check in with John Dickerson, see what's coming up at 7 o'clock on CBS this morning. Good morning ahead on CBS This Morning. A new study finds that breakfast food marketed to children contains a weed killer that some health authorities have linked to cancer. Anna Werner is here with what you need to know. And the highly anticipated movie Crazy Rich Asians hits theaters today. Lee Cowan talks to the director about his effort to change Hollywood. See you at 7.